All right, we're back again with another episode of Roofer Reflections, and I'm really excited to have Reggie here. So Reggie, uh, thank you, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and it's uh, good to be with you. Yeah, what were your early interests as a child? You know, I was raised in a preacher's home, so I was in church my whole life, and my outside of church life, really, sports was just kind of my deal. I yeah, yeah. What were your early, uh, you know, jobs or ideas around career? So I was going into the ministry and uh, my dad was a preacher, as I mentioned, and I basically traveled the country preaching from different church to different church. And um, I enjoyed that for, I think, six or seven years. And I was married during the time. Uh, and my wife decided one day, as much as I was enjoying it, she wasn't as equally committed. <laughs> so I came from home from a trip. And uh, all my stuff was laid out on the front porch. And so <laughs> I had to figure out a new life. And uh, at that point, I was really looking to how could I start doing something pretty quickly. And the insurance business just was like rolled out in front of me. So I was in the insurance business after that for 26 years before I even got into roofing. So I've had kind of a wide variety of careers. Some of them I chose, some of them chose me. Was uh, roofing one you chose or did you land into it? Our lives kind of collapsed financially, emotionally, in every way. My wife and I, now, this now is today, 34 years. And so I had to find something to do. We were living in Georgia at the time, and my family's all from Texas. So we just hightailed it to Texas. And, uh, and when I got over there, I'm like, I got no idea what I'm going to do. And so, but I knew I had to generate money fast. And so I was just doing odd stuff here and there. And my nephew came to me um, one day, who's a builder in Texas. And he goes, you know what you ought to do? And I'm like, I have no idea. He goes, how about roofing? And I told, I looked at him and I'm like, it ain't that bad yet. And he's, so then he started telling me, well, you know, these guys, what kind of money these guys are making. And again, a part of my uh, motivation was how do I get back to gain myself financially? And as you know, roofing is a quick way to do that. Now, it was different 13 years ago when I started because we didn't have mortgage endorsement requirements or anything like that. So we could, you know, I would literally go do an inspection with an adjuster. They had totaled the roof, get in the truck, write the estimate, print the estimate out, along with a check and, you know, a homeowner signs a check and we're down the road. So things have changed a lot, but that's the way I got into the insurance bit, into roofing from insurance. And from there, I started having guys call me to do some consulting. Yeah. So tell me about the changes um, you occurred after uh, Beacon. I, I've never been treated better and had a more fulfilling career life than I had at Beacon. Um, just great people, great team I was a part of. Greg Bloom leads that team along with Michael uh, Carver. And, you know, I, I was able just to kind of step in and I had spent 10 years before I got there and really just building a lot of relationships actually online, you know, just from roofers and contractors. And, you know, I put a bunch of stuff out there and people were responding. And, and so when I got in, started selling at, at, at the distribution level, I had relationships all across the country. And so, I just started calling on those and, you know, it, it was, a, again, a great three years for me. Well, the last maybe year and a half or so, um, people had called me like at some of these conferences or at their company and go like, hey, you know, we want you to come speak. And so it, it was kind of weird to me and a little uncomfortable because nobody was asking me to come and talk about supply chain or selling shingles or who's the best shingle. It was nothing roofing related. It was always about how do I improve? They would hear me speak and then they would go like, Hey, you know, can you come in and talk to our people? I did that a little bit, but then man, it just got a little bit uncomfortable because I did not want to bite the hand that was feeding me. So to speak, I mean, Beacon, great, great company. And I love them, as I said, but I, my heart, was really chasing after really helping people at a level um, that I couldn't really do at Beacon, right? And so, uh, you know, and it wasn't really the right thing for me to, you know, kind of do both. And so back in the last year, November, I went to Greg and I'm like, hey man, you know, there's some transition here that needs to happen. And I'm now what I call chasing my calling um, and having kind of retired from a career. 
Wonderful. Is there anything that I did not ask you, but uh, you wanted to share? I would, I would encourage you to realize that as dark as the day is, and as distracting as the day is, there are rem- there is remedy. You've got to be patient with yourself. You've got to be willing to put the work and the effort in, but but because at one time or another, you can turn the situation around if you just don't faint and quit. If you stay committed and uh, you keep working at it, you know um, this is a great industry that we're in. With that. I mean, I wish people well, and uh, you know, if there's anything obviously that I can ever do to help, then I'd love to do it. 